All right, and welcome back. So today we are going to be going over section 4.3, which is how to use congruent triangles. This is technically a two-parter, but it's going to be within one video. So you're going to have multiple pages for your guided notes. Um, previously, we talked about how to prove triangles to be congruent, and now we're going to talk about how we can use our knowledge knowing that we have congruent triangles and what to do with it. So by the end of this video, we're going to be able to deduce information about segments and angles after proving that two triangles are congruent. So let's have out our guide and notes for part one. Let's begin. So a way to prove that two segments or two angles are going to be congruent is by the following. We're going to identify two triangles in which the two segments or angles are corresponding parts. Then we're going to prove that the triangles are congruent. And then we're going to state that the two parts of congruent be using the reason corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So again, we're going to identify two triangles that we see have two segments or angles that are corresponding parts. We're going to prove that those triangles are then congruent. And then we're going to state that the two parts are going to be congruent using corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So C, P, C, T, C. So let's go through an example. So we have this example right here. We are given that angle one is congruent to angle R, angle two is congruent to angle N, segment MR is congruent to segment MN. So here's how we're gonna go about it. Let's, let's just do a quick little plan. Well, if we prove that segment KR is congruent to segment PN, then you can show that the corresponding parts are co of congruent triangles. We can then use the given and apply angle side angle to show that triangle RKM is congruent to triangle MPM. So let's go through a proof here. So we're going to use our given that angle one is congruent to angle R, angle two is congruent to angle N, and segment MR is congruent to angle MN. Well, if, if we look at it, we can see that, hey, well, angle one and angle two, those are vertical angles. So we know that vertical angles are congruent. Well, we can then say that angle R is congruent to angle N using substitution since one is congruent to R and one is congruent to two. We know that two is congruent to N. So therefore, R and N, those two angles are going to be congruent. Well, now we can use angle side angle. So we'd say that triangle RKM is congruent to triangle NPM using AASA, angle side angle. And now that we know that we have two congruent triangles, this is when we can pull in CPCTC, where we can say, hey, segment KR is congruent to segment PN because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So we have to prove that we have two congruent triangles, and then we say, okay, now that I know I have congruent triangles, thus we're going to have corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Nice. With that, please work on problems one through four on the guided notes. And that's really going to be part one for you kiddos. So once you complete those four problems, one through one, you're then going to go to part two, where again, we're going to be doing even more examples and using even more knowledge on how to use these congruent triangles. So let's have out part two. Let's begin. So in the following proofs, it's going to be helpful to plan the proofs by reasoning backwards. So if we have an example right here, we have that we're given segment AB is congruent to segment CB. We're given that angle one is going to be congruent to angle two, and we need to prove that BD bisects segment AC. So the way that we're going to plan this is if we know that angle B or segment BD, pardon me, bisects segment AC, and if D is the midpoint of segment AC, then if D is the midpoint of AC, then DA has got to be congruent to DC. And then we can say, okay, well, we know that segment DA is congruent to segment DC if we have those two triangles being congruent. So if we start to go backwards from what we're trying to prove, well, we can say, okay, if we're trying to prove segment BD bisects segment AC, then we'd have to know that segment AD is congruent to segment DC, and then we go on backwards from there. And your first question is going to be to working on the 
actual proof for this example. And then it's going to be question number two, which is on the bottom of those guided notes. So let's go through example number two. So you're going to be asked to give a two column proof for, for the given information. So you wanted to do uh, that you're given that segment AB is congruent to segment DC, segment AD is congruent to segment BC, and then you're going to prove that segment AB is parallel to segment DC. So that's going to be your second problem. After that second problem, we're now going to talk about example number two. So that means you worked on problem two, and now we're going on example number two. So in this example, we're given that segment RQ is going to be congruent to segment QS, we're given that segment RT is going to be congruent to segment TS, and we want to prove that segment TQ is perpendicular to segment RS. Well, if we talk about a plan for it, segment TQ is going to be perpendicular to segment RS if segment if angle, pardon me, RQT is congruent to angle SQT. Well, if we have those two angles being congruent, angle RQT is congruent to angle SQT, that's going to happen if we have congruent triangles, triangle RQT being congruent to triangle SQT. And the only way that we can do that would be by the SSS postulate. So we worked a little bit backwards from there. So if we know, hey, we're trying to prove that these two segments are going to be perpendicular, what can we go from there? And we work backwards, and we can eventually use the side, side, side postulate. Awesome. With that in mind, please work on problems three and four on the guided notes. That's on the top of the back page of part two, and we're going to conclude with example number three. So in example number three, we are given that angle four is congruent to angle five, Segment QR is congruent to segment SR, and we want to prove that angle 2 is going to be congruent to angle 3. So if we are going to plan here, well, let's, let's talk about some things that we're going to be able to see. Well, we can see that angle 1 and angle 3 are going to be congruent. Those are vertical angles. We'd also know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 if we have congruent triangles in triangle PQR being congruent to triangle PSR. And we would have those by the SSS postulate. So that's going to be a general plan. So your question five is going to be to write a two column proof for this example. And then you're going to work on problems six and seven. Awesome job today, kiddos. This is not easy stuff, but you're trying really hard with it and you're applying everything that we've learned thus far. And I'm really, really proud of you. Keep making yourself proud, though. Let us know if you have any questions, and we'll talk to you soon.